Is this on? Is this on? <laughs> All right. Hey, we're good. It is on. Uh, if everybody will just indulge <coughs> me for a minute because uh, we have some new media members here uh, for the afternoon session. Reminder to please silence your cell phones. Um, when, uh, when you have a question, please raise your hand, give your name and your affiliation. We'll get a microphone to you. Please wait till we get a microphone there. You are allowed one follow-up question as well. Uh, that being said, welcome to Buffalo and welcome uh, Villanova student athletes, Josh Hart, Chris Jenkins, and Daryl Reynolds from my right to left. Uh, guys, welcome back uh, to Buffalo and we'll go ahead and take questions. We'll start with Dana right in the center. Uh, Dana O'Neill at the ESPN. Josh, a year ago this time you were sitting up there and nobody thought you were getting out of this weekend. Now everybody thinks you're going to be repeat champions. So which is tougher? Um, I think the, uh, that's, that's a tough one. Um, I don't know, the, there was a big monkey on our backs a little bit with just the, the, first, the, the first weekend thing. Um, and it was kind of weird this year not having to answer that question. Uh, I had to answer it the last three years, um, but you know, it, it is what it is. You know, both of them are are challenging. Um, we just know we got to be focused and ready uh, to play come tomorrow. Go ahead, follow up, Dana. I guess maybe then you don't know the answer to this, but if you are lucky enough to continue to go forward, do you think the second part of this will become more difficult, the repeat thing? Um, I think I think the 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 hype will you know be a little bit more. Um, you know, if we're, if we're lucky enough to, to advance uh, far into the tournament. So the, the, the hype will be a little bit more, so that will be something that surrounding us will be, uh, you know, a distraction. And that's when we just got to focus on each other and not really, um, you know, fall into that distraction. We just got to be focused on playing Villanova basketball for 40 minutes. If we do that, um, you know, we'll take the outcome. So let's go. We got two up there, and then we'll go up front. Uh, Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer for Chris and uh, Josh. Um, uh, last year, did you uh, enjoy the moment coming in and this year now being seniors and coming off what you came off last year, are you enjoying and embracing the moment more than you did last year? Um, uh, I think it was harder last year to embrace it just, just with, um, you know, like I said, just not the pressure, but just Everything that came around with, you know, the 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 first round exits, you know, or the first weekend exit, the last couple of years, so that was kind of hard to embrace, because uh, we knew, you know, no matter how we played, uh, you know, that first game, um, you, know, it, you know, we knew we were gonna have to, you know, if we won that one, we knew we were gonna have to answer that question, and we knew that was gonna be the big, you know, the big story and everything, the you know, uh, the next couple of days. So, you know, and now it's, it's hard to do it now because now we have to, you know, the question is about repeating. So, you know, <laughs> you can't really embrace it too much. Obviously, it's, it's a blessing being able to be here. You know, this isn't a privilege. Um, but, you know, that's what we got to just rely on each other and just focus on each other and don't focus on um, anything else. We got to embrace the time that we have together at the end. You know, that's really the only thing we can really embrace. Yeah, just like Josh said, you know, just take it one game at a time, one day at a time. and. You know, we, we really enjoy being around each other, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to tomorrow. Okay, we're going to go in the center middle, and then we'll go to Bucky right here. Josh and Chris, this is Kevin Cooney, Calkins Media. You got, the last time you guys were in this building was your freshman year against UConn with a shot to go to the Garden. Um, how much is that game and what happened that year is still a little bit of a motivation when you get to this time of year? Yeah, we um, I remember that one vividly. Uh, you know, Shabazz, um, that that UConn team, they they were t tough and talented. Um, but we we try not to think about that too much now. You know, obviously, um, you know, we knew we were playing Buffalo. That was kind of the first thing. Right when we popped, we heard Buffalo. It was like, oh, I remember when we went there freshman year. We played it. You know, we had a you know a tough game against UConn there. Um, but now we don't really think about it. I, I think the only time we really thought about it was. Like the first time when we heard, you know, we'll probably be going to Buffalo. And it's like, oh, well, Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> so. Hi, Bucky Gleason with the Buffalo News. Chris or Josh or both. How much do you think that the perception of your team and your coach has changed? Uh, I mean, you, you win a national championship and it's no longer 
you know, this, this team can't win. Same with your coach. Can you, can you take me through that a little bit, that now this guy, he was a good coach before, but somehow one win be, makes him better? Yeah, that's, that's everyone, huh? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, you know, there, there's one, you know, the blessing about coach and this program is nothing ever really changes. And I think that's the biggest thing, no matter, um, you know, if you're coming off, uh, you know, a national championship, you know, year or we were coming off, you know, that when they were here for that 13 to 19 year, you know, nothing in this program ever um, changes. The core values are still the same. Um, the commitment, you know, to, to our core values is still the same. So I think the only thing that may, made it might have changed is, you know, his drilling in those core values a little, like a little bit more. You know, you, you know, you, last year was, you know, amazing just in terms of everyone buying in and, we saw, you know, what can happen when we buy into Villanova basketball. Um, that's something that Coach told us, you know, after that happened. He was like, you guys thought I was crazy about our core values now. <laughs> but, um, you know, that, that's one thing about us. And nothing ever changes. You know, we didn't – never talked about repeating this whole year. It was just about, you know, committing ourselves to Villanova basketball, buying in, and, you know, being the best team we can be at the end of the year. Down front here. Uh, Tom Withers, Associated Press. Chris, is there any downside at all in making one of the most iconic shots in the history of college basketball? Is there any downside? <laughs> yeah, uh, after, after I made the shot, it was a lot of downside. You know, just focus on, you know, what, what else we have to do. Is there one, any amusing thing that's happened to you, though, just because of the shot, people coming up to you or anything like that? Nah. They come up to him everywhere. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> And if I could, find, Josh, um, what, how do you avoid complacency or being satisfied when, when you've won it all? It starts with our coach, and then it starts with us three, and then it trickles on down. Uh, you, know, you know, coach is continuing to get on us, um, especially us three seniors. Um, and so we got, at max, I think, six games left, you know, possibly in our career. And, you know, coach isn't like, okay, you know, let, let them go, you know, we've had some successful years, let them just kind of do what we do. You know, he, he's getting on us and he's continuing to coach us, you know, even at the end of our career. So, you know, we're doing that, we're being coachable and we're listening to everything he says. And it's, you know, it goes from us and it triggers on down. When those younger guys see, you know, the seniors in their last, you know, their last go around, last, you know, couple weeks left of their college career, still, you know, allowing themselves to be coached. You know, that forces them to do it. And they're great guys, and they're going to follow our lead. Uh, but we know it starts with us three. Let's go right here in the center, Dana, and then we'll go across the aisle. Uh, Dana, Neil Darrell, I know you guys don't talk about repeat, but, I mean, you have to think about it at some level. Do you allow yourself to even process, you know, get that into your head? Because you know what you're going for. Yeah, obviously, we would like to repeat. I think every team would want to win this tournament. It's not a team in this team, uh, in a tournament that wouldn't want to win. But um, just like before, you know, just like we dealt with in the years past, you can't look too far behind or too far forward because you'll end up tripping on what you're doing right now. So, you know, coaches try to drive that home and just focusing on the present, focusing on the next game. You know, we could be thinking about repeating and completely overlook our next game and you lose and you don't even have a chance to make it to that point to be able to repeat. So it's just, a, uh, it's just something we've been doing over the last couple of years, just making sure that we're focused on the next game and focused on uh, what we can control at the moment. Over here on the right, guys. Jay Skursky with the Buffalo News. Chris, how many times have you relived that shot in your mind and, and thought about it? And for you personally, was it tough to maybe find motivation again this season, given that, I mean, that, that's like the ultimate dream for any player, and you've already lived it? I only think about it or talk about it when I'm asked about it. And, you know, it wasn't hard for me because I still have a lot that I want to accomplish. And, I'm a part of this great team with these great guys and the guys in the locker room. So, you know, when you have guys around you like that, it's, uh, it's easy to refocus. Do you have a follow-up, Jake? How much, uh, for any of you guys, how much do you know about Mount St. Mary's and the, the history of the 1 versus 16 matchup? Daryl, you want to take Me? Yeah. Cool. Um, our, uh, our freshman year, uh, I think we played Mount St. Mary's in the beginning of the year. So we got to see a little bit of their program at that point. Um, we watched the game yesterday. 
you know, they're, they're a talented team. I think every team at this point is a talented, tough team, especially those teams like that that have won their conference tournaments and stuff like that. Um, they're a good team, man. They're a good team. Like every team in this tournament, you know, they, they, they play fast. They, uh, they seem to play hard. You know, they, they, they're uh, disciplined in their coaching. Um, obviously, we know about the one sixteen matchup. We know the the hype that's built around that. We understood that coming into this, but you know, it's just part of this tournament. You know, it's one of those things. That it's one of those questions you're gonna have to answer with this tournament. You know, it's nothing to be uh, upset about anything like that. It's just you understand what it is and you move forward. Sorry if I wasn't talking loud enough. I just realized that I could have leaned a little bit forward <laughs> and talked. <laughs> I, I just real. So I see him in the back. I'm, I'm sitting here whispering. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> You're coachable. Good work. <laughs> Other questions for our Villanova student athletes? Yeah, go ahead, Jay. For Josh, you mentioned uh, having a memory of coming to Buffalo. You guys have been here now since Monday. Do you guys sort of feel like, and you've gone through a Buffalo snowstorm, do you feel like an honorary Buffalonian at this point? A little bit. I think I've yet to see the sun. So, um, <laughs> I, I hope that's not what, what it's like up here, all the, you know, the all 365 days. But, um, I mean, yeah, yeah I, I like that, the warm weather. So, no, I was about to say go back home, but I think it's snowing in Philly, too. So, I think <laughs> we just got to tough it through the last couple of weeks with, uh, with the, the weather and everything. But um, I guess you could say we kind of feel like, you know, Buffalonians, I think that's what it is. So. <laughs> Did we get a question in the in the back there? Matt Bove, WKBW. You feel like Buffalonians. What have you guys been doing in your free time? Obviously, you've got practice coming up, and you've been watching the game last night. But anything fun? Have you guys had any time to enjoy it? Um, nothing really. We just relax. Um, we we all watch the movie. Was that Monday night? I think Monday night we we got here. We watched okay. the movie. Uh, together, and that was really about it. I, I wish we could tell you we had like this epic, you no know, <laughs> snowball fight, and it was amazing. <laughs> but no, not really. We just been in our rooms, um, just relaxing, taking off mind, taking our mind off the tournament, and then, you know, just enjoying each other's company. All right, not seeing any more questions, uh, gentlemen. Thanks for your time. Uh, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah. Joined by uh, Villanova head coach Jay Wright. Uh, coach, welcome back to Buffalo. Thank you. Uh, th this is a regular stop for you. I think <laughs> once at Hofstra and, and another time it, yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> 2010. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is great to uh, to be back in Buffalo. Um, uh, love West uh, Western New York, and, uh, and and I think our team is uh, is excited about this this upcoming game. It's pretty cool to watch a game together last night and and watch our opponent in in Mount St. Mary's, who's a, a tough team, great great guards, and and um, and, and, and and very tough. Um, kids on their team, so it should be a good game. With that, we'll open it up to questions. Please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. We'll start right here in the uh, center. Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer. Jay, um, Josh came in uh, before and he said that it, it's been tough to embrace and enjoy an NCAA tournament when they always, you guys all never got by the first weekend, and now talking about repeat or whatever, uh, again, it's hard to do that. What would you tell your players about you know enjoying the moment, especially your senior class who this is their last go around. That, that's he, he said it's hard to enjoy it because of that. Enjoy it and embrace it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think what he means is is in, in terms of um, enjoying all the lead up and all the hype, all the, all, all that stuff. You know, the open practices and the and, the, and this uh, media um, because I think they want they want to enjoy the end results. That's what they want to enjoy. And I think they understand that. You know, I think they understand there's a there's a commitment that you have to have during this time as you're preparing and playing games, and and you can get to enjoy it. You know, on the weekend if you if you get past the the second game, and then you, then you start it all over again. We'll go, uh, Bucky, uh, and then uh, back. Uh, Bucky Gleason, Buffalo News. Jay, is this a little bit weird for you at all when you come back here knowing, I mean, there's the Rochester angle, there's the Bucknell side, you have been here before, you know this area you recruited here. I grew up with Rick Winuck, by the way, who you recruited. So yeah, man. Uh, what is it like for, for you when yeah, you come it, back here? A, a lot of, um, I, it, we just had the meeting, the coaches meeting, and, and uh, Mike Bray's in there, and, and Buzz Williams, and Huggins, and we, you know, we've all, it seems like, Hugs and Mike Bray and us have been at the same spot, you know, for the last three years. I don't know how that works. Um, but coming back to Western New York is always cool. I have great memories about starting uh, at University of Rochester and, and recruiting a lot here in the Buffalo area, not getting Greg Winuk, not getting the Trogalskis. It's all the guys I didn't get from this area. Trying to recruit Christian Leitner as a freshman, not knowing he was going to be that good. Um, but I, I do I do like coming up here, and, and and Bucknell being here is really cool too. We're really proud of Nathan and those guys. Um, so yeah, a lot a lot of connections here, and uh, and we're enjoying it. It's going also to the Anchor Bar and Duffs. We like that too. <laughs> Jay Kevin Cooney, Calkins Media. Last last year, one of the lines you used in Brooklyn a lot was that you knew. This t your team knew that you would be judged by whatever happened in the NCAA tournament, fairly or not. Do you still feel that way with this group because you've kind of climbed the mountaintop, or does it change at all? Th that, that's something that we've discussed as a team. I just think in general, um, you're defined by what you did in the NCAA tournament as a college player. You know, if, if you're a team that's getting there every year, you. The, the team and you as a player get defined that way, nationally with fans, and and that's okay. And but we don't define our guys that way within our program, and uh, they don't. I don't think they define themselves that way. And we want to make sure that. But it, it's it is the reality. You know, there can be a guy that, um, you know, doesn't have a great career, but if he does something in the NCAA tournament, everybody remembers him forever. And that's cool too. Let's go. Dana right here in front, and we'll go to Mark, and then we'll go up front. Uh, Dana O'Neill with ESPN. So this time last year, Jay, you're sitting up there, and nobody thought you could get out of the first weekend. Now everybody wonders if you can repeat. Is one more difficult than the other? And the pressure that you faced last year, can that be at all applicable to the pressure you might face this year going forward? Yeah, I, I don't know if one's harder than the other, Dana, but they're, they're different. Um, they're definitely different. Um, th there is there is. I, I would say the same level of pressure, but it's, it's a different kind of pressure. 
and, and in terms of being applicable, it definitely is. I, I, I think, uh, you know, pressure is pressure. So um, you, want, you want to embrace it and try to make it, allow it to make you better. And we, we had a different kind of pressure last year. It was like you know, that, that second round pressure was crazy. Um, and this year it, it is about repeating. You know, you're a one seed, and so you're supposed to win it if you're the one seed, right? So uh, it just, it's all about how you handle that. And I think having that pressure last year and having pressure this year, I think, makes it a little bit easier to handle. Let's go back here with Mark. Right there. No, behind you. Uh, hi, Mark Tracy, New York Times. On, on a lighter note, uh, Coach Huggins uh, earlier said that uh, he used to be the best dressed coach, <laughs> uh, better than you, and then obviously he went a different way. And I guess on the flip side, I'd ever, I was going to ask you if uh, you know, you'd ever consider going, going without a tie. We have another tieless coach uh, here in Mike Bray, and I uh, was wondering how important the tie is to the, uh, to the coaching and to the uh, image. <laughs> You know, I, the, the reason that I dress that way is because it's just been the tradition, you know, in, in coaching, you wear a suit and tie. But um, Hugs is, I, I would like to do an article sometime on, on the lines that Hugs gives me before the game when you shake hands about your attire, his attire, his look, your look. I just got it up there at the meeting. It, great. It, it could fill an article. He's got great lines. Um, <laughs> He, he's, he's the best. And Mike, um, I remember when Mike used to go with the crew neck, that was, he, he was a trendsetter with that. And then we, I think he and I had a discussion one summer and I said to him, like, you gotta go with the open collar, man. You, you can, that's the next look. I don't know if he did it because of that, or, but I know we had a discussion about that. It's, it's important all of us. And I like, I don't know, I, I, like, I like Hugs' look. I, I, I would, I don't like, when you wear a nice suit and, and you're in the huddle and they're sweating on your suit, you know, they're, they're, the guys are dripping on top of you. Like, I think, like, why am I wearing this suit? But it's tradition. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yep. Yep. Go uh, Tom Wood is Associated Press. Jay, did you have to worry about this group being complacent or satisfied? You know, kind of the idea we won it all last year, maybe not have necessarily the drive that they needed? Definitely. I was, I, I was really concerned about that coming in this season. Obviously, I hadn't been a part of a national championship team before, so I didn't really know how to handle it. They hadn't. Um, but I did talk to a lot of coaches, and everybody said to me, there is a, there is a definite hangover that you have to deal with. Don't, don't uh, deny it. Don't hide from it. It's going to be there. And it really is. And we talked about it all year. And, and I, I'm very proud of our three seniors, Josh and Daryl and Chris, and how <clears throat> you know, at 22 years old, they're able to handle the maturity of getting past it taking on the next challenge, continuing to be humble and get better. Uh, really proud of them. I, I don't think I could have done that at 22. If I, we, our staff jokes all the time. If, if we would have done what Chris Jenkins did last year, we would not, we would have been uncontrollable this year. And he was, all of them, very humble and coachable. And I'm really proud of them for that. When do you feel like they shook that hangover if there was one? We, we, we discussed it, at, when we came back from the, S, we all went to the ESPYs in July, which is kind of the end of the victory tour, you know? It's the last event you, you go to after the White House, the state capitol. And we discussed it as a team because we were going on a trip to Spain. And uh, that, that, hey, this, tri this trip to Spain starts the next year, that's over. And we went to Spain, it was great because no one knew who we were, they didn't know we were national champions. And um, it, it really gave us a fresh start, you know? But when we got to the, uh, baggage claim in Philadelphia and everyone saw that we were there and they started coming up to us and taking pictures and we like it hit all of us that Ooh, we're back in it okay we're gonna have to deal with this but we did get a fresh start on a trip to Spain it was really helpful to us let me go back left here and then we'll go to Bucky Jay when you were in Rochester some 30 years ago and grinding away and hitting the recruiting trail is this years. is this where you pictured yourself uh, I thought Sitting like here defending five, national. ten years ago, I thought it was. Right, right. Um, nah, not at all. I, you know what? I, I loved I, – I would have been happy, you know, if, if I could have been the guy to replace Mike Neer at Rochester at that time. You know, I was just so happy to be coaching. It seems crazy right now that you get to, you get to coach at Villanova and you would have been – but you didn't know any of this was possible, you know. And I was having so much fun and enjoying being a coach so much. I loved University of Rochester. Mike Neer was a great coach. I really would have been at that time. That was a big deal to me. Like Mike Neer was God to me back then. You know, like wow, if I could get, if I could ever do that someday, that was my thought process. 
kind of a combination of the previous three questions, both with your dress. I talked to your tailor today, by the way, uh, Gabriel. We've got to get him under control. Yeah, he, he's a funny guy. Did you know, by the way, that he coached his church league team to second place like 40 years ago? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah. I'm sure you did. Anyway, it, it, and, and the attention paid. I mean, you, now you have people, you know, I'm calling your tailor. People are talking <laughs> about your suits. How has your life changed uh, when you look at the tournament? You were criticized before for not winning enough in the tournament, and then all of a sudden, you know, you win one game you know, one right. shot, yeah, and yeah. so much has changed, if you can take yeah. me through that. You know, it, it hasn't really changed that much, just more, just with the, you know, the media and, and um, you know, in, in basketball venues, you know, that's that's about it. You, um, in my household, please, uh, trust me, I'm like number five on that list in there. I still take out the trash, do everything I'm told to do. Um, but it, it really hasn't, except, you know, in situations like this, you know, when you talk with the media, um, but I, th I think, you know, I'm the same guy. I think in the program, we all try to stay the same. I talked our, about our players, you know. We, we try to enjoy um, the, this, the journey that we're on. This is why we, we do what we do is to, you know, to be a coach and, um, and to be with your players and to be on a college campus, you know, and, and, and to be at practice. That's what we love. And it's still the biggest part of my life. Sorry. The perception has changed, yeah. I guess, right? Yeah, is, that's is that, what I, Is that kind of a weird? I'm not as articulate as you guys. That's well, what I meant to say. Uh, you don't know me very well. Uh, <laughs> the tra is, that, is that a weird kind of transformation yeah. to see how others view you has kind of gets altered, yeah. even though you wake up this, you know, the same way? Yeah. But as you said, we were criticized a lot for losing in the second round, and I really wasn't, I wasn't feeling bad about what we were doing. I actually felt really good about what we were doing. I, you know, I was disappointed every time we lost that game, but where our program was, our guys were graduating. We were winning Big East championships. Our guys were giving their best effort. I was good. I, I was. I felt really good about what we were doing. So, when when people were criticizing us, if we if I was feeling good, then when people are praising us, I really shouldn't feel any better. You know, I should. You don't just take it on one side. You know. So that, that's really, I think, why I hope I hope we haven't changed. So let's go, Jay, and then we'll go across the aisle to Dana. Uh, Jay Skirsky with the Buffalo News. You spoke earlier about pressure. Is there a unique type of pressure that comes with being the one seed in a one versus 16 matchup? Yeah, there, there's, I, I don't know if it's a top seed, but there's a one, there's a one 16 pressure. And we've, we've felt it before. You know, I, 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 I told our team about, uh, we were a one seed and actually the Philly guys might, I might be wrong on this. I count on our media for details. Um, but we played Monmouth, were we a one? We played Monmouth in the Wells Fargo Center where we play our home games. They were a 16 seed, and they made a run on us in the second half, and the whole building turned on us. And it was like a Monmouth home game in our arena. I was shocked. I, I, I never had experienced that. We had never been a one seed, but everybody was going for the underdog. And there was a, that's a crazy kind of pressure there, um, you know, especially when you're on your home court. And you just know it. You know, you know those teams can, they can get it going, and, and they're, they put a game pressure on you when you're a one seed. I mean, you just, you just got to be ready for it, and, and you've got to overcome that too. And just to follow up on Chris, you uh, mentioned earlier, or he was up here earlier and mentioned that he doesn't think about the shot unless he's asked about it. That's kind of, <laughs> I find that to be unbelievable. I mean, I, I don't think I'd ever stop thinking about it, but how, is that just his personality that he's yeah. able to put it aside? Well, I think it's more his intelligence. You know, he's, he's a confident, um, uh, cocky in a good way in a good way kid um, but we talked about it right after the season he, and he's real bright he's really bright so when we talked about you still got a year left you want to get better you've got this for the rest of your life he just right away internalizes that but I, I'm I'm amazed I watch for this when the guys do shooting drills at the end of practice or they're doing competitions you would think one time it would slip you know I hit the big shot you know or he, I've never ever seen him mention it ever, and it's really impressive. Dana. Jay, in an era now when players are kind of coming and going because of one and done and things, do you think a program such as yours is more equipped to repeat than perhaps others that we might think would look like more likely repeat champions? Um, that's good. I hope, I hope so. I hope <laughs> our experience, you know, I hope our experience is, is really valuable in this, you know, and uh, you know, usually what gives you a chance to repeat is a lot of returning players, you know, a lot of returning good players. Um, 
when Florida repeated, that entire team came back to repeat. Now, our team didn't come back to repeat, and we lost two great seniors. Um, but we do have a – I think the key is the, is the, is the number of pl quality players returning, you know. And as you say, because of one and done, if, you, if you're going to lose a lot of those guys, um, you're not going to have the quality players returning. So I, I hope it is an advantage for us. Come back. Jay Mapovay, WKBW. We keep going back to the wardrobe. <laughs> Windsor, double Windsor, and is a pocket square necessary? <laughs> uh, straight Windsor. Um, it, no, it's not always necessary. You know, it, it depends on the. It depends on the uh, outfit. TV guys are asking that. <laughs> Y'all good? Any other questions for Coach? Thank you, guys. Thanks I want to recognize Mike Sheridan, uh, Villanova Athletic Communications Director, who can help you with any of your other needs. Coach, good luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. Um, I mean, this year is fun just because it's personally it's with a group of seniors that I'm definitely going to miss next year, and um, I don't want it to be my last game with them um, tomorrow or even this week. So we want to continue to play, and um, we have a lot of fun off the court as well. So that's what makes it a special team. Um, but I think that Nigel was on on the money when he said that uh, us being in the tournament. Um, before and those guys being in so many other years uh, definitely helps us um, with the emotional part of it. Yep, down front. Uh, for any of the players, what makes Wisconsin such a good defensive team overall? And then why is maybe the three-point defense not a, a strong suit compared to other parts of the defense? Um, we practice defense all the time. We do defense all the time. All the time, that's what we do in practice is practice defense. So you're good at what you do often. Sometimes we've gotten away from that in the games, and those usually resulted in losses for us. So if we can get back to those principles that we've worked on, we should be pretty good. And as far as the three-point percentage defensively not being that well, um, um, just got to be a little better on our closeouts, on our contests, and uh, you know try to get the, the tough twos that we want. Obviously, the three is the most efficient shot to take, so we need to Definitely eliminate that against a team we're going to play tomorrow that shoots 40% or higher from three as a team. Any other questions for student athletes? Yep, go ahead. Uh, Ethan, um, where do you feel you've taken the most growth in your game from freshman year to sophomore year? Where have you seen the most improvement? Um, I mean, I, I just feel like I'm getting more familiar with the game itself. I mean, if you saw at the beginning of last year, I was not very good, and then I slowly got better with the more game experience I had. And um, now having more game experience into this year, uh, I think just having time on the court, <coughs> um, not only playing with my teammates, but also just seeing things, what, what to do and what not to do. Uh, I mean, I think overall, I'm just trying to take my game one step at a time um, to the next level, but it's still got a long way to go. Okay, want to recognize uh, uh, Patrick uh, Herb, who's over here on, was? Patrick's here, the Wisconsin uh, Athletic Communications Director. He can help you with any other needs you have uh, with Wisconsin. That being said, thanks, guys, for your time today. Good luck tomorrow.
at Wisconsin head coach Greg Gard at 445. Joined by Wisconsin head coach Greg Gard. Uh, coach, welcome to Buffalo. Um, and uh, we'll get started with questions at this time. If you'd please raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. I'll start right here. with John Vogel with the Buffalo News, welcome. Thank you. This team has been to many tournaments, obviously. Have you noticed anything different this time about how the players are embracing it more? No, I, I don't think so. I mean, obviously, Everybody that's in our in our program has been to tournaments every year, so that's something that 
I think we constantly remind them of and, and make sure they don't take it for granted. You know, to, to have, be a program that's gone to 19 straight NCAA tournaments is really an astonishing accomplishment. It's obviously a tribute to the players and coaches that have been here uh, before us. Um, but uh, it, that's one thing specifically with our younger guys that they understand that it takes a lot of work to get here. Um, but I haven't noticed anything different. They've gone about the process the same way. I think they appreciate where we're at. Um, and uh, this is a reward for having a really good regular season. A question right in the center here. Norm Wood from the Daily Press in Newport News, Virginia. Greg, Ethan was talking earlier uh, about a comparison between Virginia Tech and somebody you guys have already seen. And he mentioned Michigan just because of the, the number of shooters that Tech has. And it's similar to what you saw with Michigan. Is that a fair assessment? And given that, um, is it, a, is it a tough matchup for you because you guys have struggled defending from the perimeter at times? Well, I think it's a tough matchup because they're a good team, uh, regardless of matchup. I think you get to this point in time in the year and that if you're still playing, consider yourself fortunate, but most likely your opponent's going to be really good too. Um, as I've said many times, all the average to bad teams are on spring break right now. So I think comparatively, I don't know if there's anybody, uh, maybe some personnel things here and there. Um, you know, Seth Allen reminds me a little bit of Derek Walton from Michigan, just how he controls the ball and ball screen situations and those type of things. But uh, probably built a little bit differently uh, in, in most regards than, than a lot of teams we've played. Yeah, I'd have to go back maybe through the non-conference and look at some teams there. But, uh, you know, they've – Buzz has done a heck of a job there in, in three years. And they've uh, – with how they share the ball and the, the way they can spread the floor with obviously a lot of shooters, it's going to put a stress on anybody regardless of – any comparison or, or who you've played in the past. So we'll have to obviously be extremely sharp in terms of rotations and things tomorrow night. We'll go here uh, and then right in front. Ava Wallace with the Washington Post. Um, you obviously coached against Buzz a number of times when he was at Marquette. How aware were you back then of his kind of coaching quirks and his oddities that he's built his reputation on, especially? He's like Rain what? Man? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that. I knew that back in 2002. And I think, did you talk to Buzz earlier in the week, too? Because he, I just was with him for a little bit at our coaches meeting. But 2002, I'm a first year assistant at Wisconsin. And we're playing in a tournament in Hawaii. And Buzz at the time was at Colorado State as an assistant. And we got together in my hotel room to share scouting reports. I think they were going to play LSU. We were going to play Hawaii. So we were exchanging third day of the tournament, some notes and stuff. And just the questions he asked and the numbers he was pulling out of the air that um, you could tell that he was very inquisitive and very detail-oriented and really, um, you know, I gave him a couple of those looks like, what the heck are you talking about? Um, but obviously, you know, 15, 16 years later, look where we're both at. So yeah, I knew then, not knowing really who he was, that was the first time I had met him. And then obviously years later, he ends up at Marquette and, uh, you know, and then on to, to here or to Virginia Tech. So, I mean, he was sweeping floors at JUCOs in Texas when I was sweeping floors at junior highs in Wisconsin. So he's had to work his way up. He, he's had to do it the hard way. He hasn't had anything handed to him. Um, I, I have an appreciation for that because I think there's some similarities there with my career trek um, and, and the places you've coached at and, and embraced and loved. And I know he would say the same thing about the places he's been at that are obscure and nobody would really know they exist. Um, you have an appreciation for that when you when you develop or, or come through those ranks. And uh, like I said, I have a lot of respect for Buzz for how he's gone about his career and the places he's gone to and who he's coached with. and and how he's stuck with it and kept grinding. Um, so his number analytics, I have, that's sometimes over my head when he's pulling out those numbers. Um, and there's obviously a large disparity in, ex in tournament experiments between these two, experience, excuse me, between these two rosters. Do you see that play out at all on the court when, when the game's happening, or is it really just a being able to handle all of the outside stuff? Yeah, I think, it's, I think you get to this point in time of the year, experience maybe have been a bigger thing back in November. Now we're through this point. They played through a, a rigorous conference schedule. We have too. We've both seen tournament environments, so I think you can kind of throw that out. You know, they've got some guys that have some experience um, in game environments. I think sometimes that's overblown because we've already played 30 some games each. Uh, it'll be a matter of who does what they've done well all year better 
uh, for the 40 minutes tomorrow night. They'll do the things they try to do and have been successful at all year, and we'll try to counter with what we've been good at all year. In front. Yep. Uh, Mark uh, Berman of the Roanoke Times in Virginia. In terms of what you've been good at all year, you know, with the, with the size advantage you have against Virginia Tech, you just kind of – uh, lick your chops and say let's let's pound the ball inside and see if we can uh, take you know make it take advantage of the of the size and and try to get them in foul trouble. Well, they utilize what they do pretty well in terms of how their their reaction to the gaps and their ability to put pressure on the post. Um, you know, and they defend and some they throw some different defenses at you. They'll mix some zone combinations in with their man and some switching and they will trap in the post a little bit here and there. So, I, I, we try to attack in terms of there's a plan going into it, but also we have to adjust to what is available. And that's why we like multi-dimensional players that can play inside, outside, and, and do a variety of things and try to be a real balanced team and not be one maybe aspect of the game or scoring dependent. So um, we always like to touch the post. I mean, that's it's been a constant, a mainstay in our program for a long time. And that may be via post players. It may be via cuts. It may be via dribble attack. Um, and our buzz's buzz's term is paint touches, you know, and and ours is very similar in terms of we want to get the ball to that high percentage area as much as we can. Question right up front here. Your name and affiliation, please. Tom Oates, Wisconsin State Journal. Greg, um, even in the Big Ten tournament, your bench came through a couple the first two nights, and then the last night didn't score. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the reason for that inconsistency? Well, I think it's each game is a little different in terms of opportunities that present themselves. Um, you know, the second day of the Big Ten tournament, we played with a lead, so I was able to go a little deeper and intentionally, um, you know, give the, those main guys a little bit more of a break. When you have a 25-point lead, you're a little more likely to, to be able to play some guys down the stretch. So um, that, I think, that game maybe went to that a little bit more. Um, we I look at who can take advantage of opportunities. Matchups is one thing. Michigan, I just didn't feel we got into enough of a, of a rhythm to go a whole lot deeper on the bench. I wanted to give our upperclassmen the, the, the best chance to try to make get back and get caught up and, and win that thing. So it, it's a game-by-game -game decision in terms of who and how much. Uh, a lot of it's personnel-driven, basically what I'm seeing on the floor. Um, and obviously, I think Saturday's game, even to some extent Friday's game, because we had a, a lead there that I can be a little more flexible with the guys I'm putting on the floor. The second row here. Yep. Uh, Greg, as good as you guys have been on, on defense this year, um, you know, three-point defense, maybe not as much of a, a forte. Uh, why is that, and, and what do you have to do better in that regard uh, against Virginia Tech, perhaps? Well, I think one thing that kind of gets lost in the shuffle here is that our percentage at times gets higher, higher um, than maybe we'd like it to be. But also, if you look at our attempts, they usually are the fewest. I think we gave up the second fewest threes attempted in the Big Ten, second to Michigan. So I look at th – there's two ways to look at it. You can look at the percentage or you can look at how many threes we're giving up. So we try to run people off the line um, and, and minimize the attempts. Probably I look at that more than what is the percentage that we're giving up. Uh, and, and different teams play it different ways. We, we don't extend quite as much, so that that allows sometimes we compress things a little bit more, and sometimes that allows to um, have a higher percentage shot against you, um, trying to take away other parts of, of the offense's ability. So, um, you know, I know our percentage, I know where it ranks, but I also look at the attempts given, and there's a counterbalance uh, to that either way. Yep, back Greg, uh, Joe Stojic with uh, Heroes Media Group. Um, aside from the tournament itself, what, is it, what does it mean for you being a re from Wisconsin, uh, climbing up through the ranks from Wisconsin, different schools? Uh, just personally, what does it mean for you, you know, being able to lead the, uh, the Badgers to another tournament? Well, you, I obviously you take great pride in it because when I was from 0 to 23 or 24, the Badgers were never in the NCAA tournament. So to come through that span of your lifetime and uh, never see Wisconsin in an NCAA tournament, um, it's, it obviously has a special meaning right now. My kids know no different. I've got a 15, 13, and 8-year-old, and they've never seen an NCAA tournament without Wisconsin in it. So uh, having, as you mentioned, grown up in the state and coached at three different schools, uh, my last time in Buffalo was in 1995. Uh, Platteville played in the Final Four 
and, and won a national championship here at Buffalo State. So that was when Buffalo came up on, on Sunday, that was right where my mind went to was 95 and the last time I'd, I was here. So you have those type of memories and connections and relationships in the state um, that I think, you know, when you're leading your home state school, there's an extra sense of pride in that. Uh, and obviously I know we represent the state and, and Badger fans and alumni across the country, uh, but obviously those in the state, um, it, it's an extra, little extra special to it because I, I'm one of them. I, I sat in that seat or watched on TV or whatever for a lot of years and have witnessed how, how far the program has grown over that time. Let's go uh, here and then we'll go back to John. Uh, Greg, what do, you, what do you see from you guys when you're clicking like you were in the Big Ten semis, say, versus some of the losses you had later in the year? What, what's the difference to you when, as, as you watch the, the, your team on film or in the, in the game itself? Well, the, the ball moves. I think that's pretty obvious. We've, we've, the ball had moved pretty well. I thought it moved really well on Friday and Saturday, not quite as much as well on, on Sunday. Um, also, we went a little through a little stretch where Caning was banged up and then he missed a game. I think that impacted us offensively when you have a player like that that's not in rhythm or not in sync. It has a tendency to, to trickle to other guys. Um, but, but all of our better teams have, have had very good spacing, ball movement, have different guys that can score from different areas, be able to stretch the floor a little bit with bigs that can shoot the ball. So um, that, that rhythm that we got into you know, over the last three or four games is something we'll try to replicate um, offensively, uh, maybe not as much with, with last Sunday's game, but a lot of that also had to do with Michigan. I thought they did some really good things to us. Um, and, and obviously, offensively, they were hitting on all cylinders, so we were playing catch up most of the game. So. Um, just try to get in a rhythm, share the ball, take care of the ball. Um, you know, the ball ball moves pretty well. We we don't over dribble when we're in rhythm, and, and at times when we're out, we over dribble and, and pound it too much. So, trying to stay away from that and more of the other. John Bobo again. What do you remember about that about Buffalo from that Buff State tournament, and what have you noticed about the city this time? Um, well, there wasn't any. There wasn't this much snow here then. I know that. Uh, I remember the gym being orange, and I was just confirmed. He confirmed it backstage that it's orange and black. Um, we played Steve Alford's Manchester team. It was at that point in time. It was the first time two undefeated teams had met for a national championship. I think they came in 31 and 0, and we came in 30 and 0. Um, so yeah, we had we uh, took the team to an Italian restaurant, which I found out now is out of business. Uh, cause I, chatted with Coach Ryan or traded messages over the week when it was announced we were coming here. And he said, hey, take the team to, I think it was Carmine's. I think that's what we decided the name was. Now we found out it's out of business. <laughs> um, but uh, no, it was obviously great memories because you, my second year in college coaching and we win a national championship. I mean, I got spoiled pretty quickly. <laughs> um, but it was, it was a good time. Seems like 100 years ago, but uh, <laughs> it was fun. Let's go back down here. Uh, Greg, uh, I guess free throw shooting not a strong suit for you guys. How much does that concern you going up against a Virginia Tech team where Buzz, you know, tries to get a lot of points from the line? Well, them trying to get points at the line and us shooting free throws are kind of two opposite things, though. They don't foul very much, and we try not to foul very much either. Um, it, specifically, the free throws have been two guys, and they ironically are two guys that get there the most, Hayes and Hap. So uh, they both have been working on it all year. Uh, I think hopefully we've seen some some um, progression in a positive way over the last week, uh, more in, in game environments. And they've been OK during the, in, during the year in the practice environment. It's been the game environment where we haven't been able to capitalize on it. So um, you know, mainly, I want to make sure we're getting there, although I know they don't foul a whole lot and don't put teams at the line a lot. And they try to get there quite a bit. So you, know, you look at, you analyze numbers going back to uh, the lady behind you's question about Buzz's analytics, and you look at the free throw attempts and, and those type of things, uh, numbers are similar uh, in terms of the amount of times they try to get there. And it, albeit it's different, you know, it's a different maybe a method to do it, but still trying to get the same result of, of making more free throws than the opponent attempts. Um, speaking of 95, that team made 200 more free throws than the opponent attempted, which may be a record. Um, hence why they went 31 and 0. They were pretty good at getting the, to the line and converting there. So, um, but yeah, that's just what we're, you know, we'll try to get there as much as we can and hopefully Ethan and Nigel can get in a rhythm and get some confidence going in a, in a live environment. Any other questions for Coach Gard? 
not coach, we wish you the best of luck in the uh, late game tomorrow against Virginia Tech. All right, thank you.
Okay, we are joined by uh, student athletes from Mount St. Mary's, uh, from uh, right to left, Elijah Long, uh, Junior Robinson, and Chris Ray. It's been quite a uh, 48 hours for, for you guys. Welcome to Buffalo. Uh, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions uh, for these gentlemen right now. Right down here, we'll start. Uh, Greg Swatek of the Frederick News Post. Chris, can you describe what that moment was like when you grabbed that ball at the end of the game last night? Um, I think the word is necessary. It was necessary because, like we talked about, uh, in the moments like that, especially in March, if a team can get their hand on the ball, more times than not, it actually goes in. I mean, a heave, a throw, anything. So we, it was just necessary to get the ball. Let's go right here, and then we'll come up front. Uh, Joe Giuliano from the Philadelphia Inquirer. For those of us who have not seen a lot of Mount St. Mary basketball, for any of the three of you, how would you describe the way you play, and what has been the key to your success in the tournament run and last night? <laughs> um, I think we, we just cause a lot of chaos on the court. Man, we play really fast, really hectic. We take a lot of threes and we defend the three well. So I say our success is just playing, being, being able to play together and our love for the game. Elijah, you want to weigh in? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, the word, uh, the, yeah, a little word that coach always says is mayhem and it's like a controlled chaos. And it's just trying to turn the ball, uh, turn the other team over a lot, and just you know, fast breaks, a lot of fast breaks, alley oop dunks, um, and just being able to like play off of each other's energy. Right down front, uh, Jay Skursky with the Buffalo News. Just for any of you guys, what have the last you know 24 to 48 hours been like from playing a you know a thrilling game in, in the NCAA tournament to traveling here and getting ready to face the overall top seed? Um, I mean, as far as traveling, we did it. Uh, we've done this in the non-conference. We had a, a long three-week trip. So uh, as far as like the traveling part, we're used to it. But um, we just try to keep the same mentality of one game at a time, regardless of what game it is, whether it be a non-conference, conference, tournament, and now in the NCAA tournament. Junior? Uh, like you said, we had that three-week trip where we played, I don't know how many games and I don't know how many days. But I mean, so we're used to it. I mean, so. But it was pretty hectic. I mean, it's kind of fun too. And now we get to come play again, play another game tomorrow night. Back here on the right, Terry Tui from the Delaware County Times. Junior, you talked about you know it's kind of controlled chaos. How does that style fit your style of play? Uh, it's really fast. I mean, <laughs> we don't really play. I mean, we play controlled, but we play really fast and sometimes too fast. But we just find a way to stay. Keep our control and stay calm. Does it suit your personal style, though? Oh yeah, it does. I mean, I like playing fast. I like a lot of threes. I <laughs> like dunks. So, and we do a lot of that. So, it fits my style perfectly. Okay, let's go back here, and then let's get a mic up here to the front. No, actually, we'll start back there. But go ahead here first, and then back. Thank you, uh, Junior. Um, I, I guess you've had your share of doubters in your career. What? What have people said since you've hit, come on the scene now? And, and obviously, you're a pretty good player. But what, uh, what, what have you thought about all the doubting you've received over your career? And, and how have you uh, handled that uh, mentally? Um, I've embraced it. It's kind of like a chip on my shoulder to prove people wrong that height really doesn't matter. It's about the heart that you have and the passion that you play the game with. I mean. Each game, I'm going to probably be the shortest player on the court. Actually, I'm going to be the shortest player on the court. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, so I just have to come out. <laughs> I just come out and just play my hardest and play with the, the heart that I have and for the love of the game and for the love of my brothers. Let's go in the back left corner to Mark. I'm Mark, Tra Mark Tracy from the New York Times. I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, over here. Um, just wondering, I mean, it's not just, you know, a plan to one seed, but, you know, like many people, I'm wondering if you guys were actually watching last year that, that, that championship game and, and Nova winning it and, and what it's like from then to now now to know that you're playing them in the NCAA tournament. Um, yeah, I think someone asked a similar question yesterday about that. And uh, I don't think we would, any of us on the team would have guessed that we're going to play, you know, um, Villanova, you know what I mean? But, you know, it is March Madness. and. I mean, it's a humbling experience, but then again, you know, they're just human beings just like us. You know what I mean? We're just going to go out there and play. The one thing that they do well consistent on a consistent basis is play hard. They never, I don't think they ever take um, a possession off defensively or offensively. So, you know, we just got to match that intensity and 
you know, you never know what could happen at the end. Right down front, and then we'll go Jeff. Quick question for Eli. Eli, you are the first Canadian player in Mount St. Mary's history, and here we are playing in Buffalo, uh, where uh, you'll get to play so close to home. What is that like for you? Hmm. Um, I mean, I'll, uh, it's funny, because I put in a group um, for the tickets, and there's supposed to be 26 of my family members to come up. But uh, I didn't get all those tickets. You know, I only got I only have nine, so the only nine people can come up. But uh, other than that, though, it's it's amazing. You know, because my parents don't really do, uh, get to see me play in person a lot. You know, um, they're always in Canada, and you know, sometimes they can't cross the border or they're just busy. So uh, when the moments like this come along, and you know, I can play an hour away from my house, it's uh, it's surreal. Like I said, and you know, I thank God for it. And you know, God always has a plan. So. You know, it's hum it's a humbling experience. Let's go to Jay first, and then right behind him. Uh, for Junior, uh, Muggsy Bogues today talked a, a lot about watching you last night and being really impressed with what he saw. Uh, had you heard any of his comments, and how neat is that to kind of put yourself on the national stage a little bit and, and to get some of that recognition? Well, I haven't heard. That's the first I've heard of it, so thanks for telling me. <laughs> but um, I mean, it's an honor because he's a Hall of Famer, so. I mean, it's a great feeling to just be recognized just because I'm short and doing things that nobody thought I could do. And uh, just to follow up for Elijah, you, you talked a little bit there about growing up just about an hour from here. Do you have any, uh, did you ever make any trips to Buffalo as a kid or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I had um, <clears throat> one of my, basically my family friends, he played for uh, the Buffalo team in uh, New York. Um, so I make up trips there to see him. But other than that, the only time I travel to Buffalo is to get airports because they're cheap. You know, the flights are cheap. So. <laughs> I would drive here, pass the board, and then take, catch a flight to go to uh, either my high school or back to the Mount. Right back here. Uh, Chris, you, always, you guys always talk about being locked in. Did you guys get a chance to enjoy the win last night, or was it straight to Villanova and, and being locked in and being ready to play tomorrow? Um, I mean, we definitely get a chance to enjoy it because, I mean, like we talked about it, and we're just enjoying the whole ride as a whole. You just have to take in everything in each experience. But I feel like for us to actually enjoy it and look back at it later on, we have to focus on what we have at hand because you don't want to look back at it and say that you celebrated too early when you have a lot more in you. Okay, back here, and then we'll go. Dave Jarman, the Villanovan. Uh, what are you guys most excited about or looking forward to when you play against Villanova tomorrow night? Pardon? Any of us can answer? Anybody in particular? Uh, uh, I think it's going to be a really hard fought game. I can, and we're going to make it a grinded out game. We have to just come out and try to compete with them at the highest level that we can compete at. Elijah? Uh, one thing I'm looking forward to is to see uh, not only about what's going to happen tomorrow, but what we're going to have in the future for next year, you know? It's it's gonna battle it's gonna battle test us and get us you know ready for not only tomorrow but in the future for next year or whatever that is because um, that's a great team so I think it's preparing us not for you know the weeks ahead of us but months and probably hopefully years ahead of us for the team that we have now. Let's get a microphone to Joe. Oh yeah, for anybody, um, d did any of you uh, see? video or anything of Chris Jenkins' winning shot last year, and you've had it, have you had a chance to watch him on TV uh, this year, uh, knowing that you know Jenkins is back and Josh Hart, who's a National Player of the Year candidate, is also on their team? I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody like watched the game, but I did, I watched it. I mean, I was, I was pretty hype about it, because I mean, I just love basketball all together, so just watching that game, seeing Marcus Page make that shot before, and then seeing that, it's just like, it's good for the game of basketball. But, I mean, overall, I can't really say that I watched too many of the games this year because I've just been focused on what we've been doing. But I mean, we have done our scouting and our uh, preparation for the game tomorrow. Yep. You know, for any of the guys, a, six, a, six, a 16 has never beaten a one. I'm sure you know that. Do you kind of have a mentality, hey, why not us? I mean, <laughs> records are meant to be broken, and we have the confidence going to this game that if we take care of things the way we're supposed to and handle ourselves in the manner that we can, why not? 
just want to stick by the saying, everything to gain and nothing to lose. Any other, any other questions for Mount St. Mary's student athletes? Okay, not seeing any guys. Good luck, first game tomorrow night against Villanova. Appreciate you being here. All right, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I wanted to introduce Mark Vandergriff, uh, Athletic Communications, Mount St. Mary's. He can assist you with any other needs you have with uh, their team. Jamie and Christian, uh, coach, first of all, congratulations on uh, first round win. Welcome to Buffalo. Great to have you here. Uh, we'll go ahead and open up uh, for questions at this time, and we'll get started right in the center here. Yeah, well, first of all, I think our travel couldn't have been more smooth getting here. Um, you know, Buffalo, everything was great for us when we got here. We're excited for the opportunity to be here. You know, when you're playing great games like this in great environments, your enthusiasm has to carry you. We've had an enthusiastic bunch and enthusiastic group all season long. So the first thing is we're really excited about being here. And there are always a lot of challenges in every opponent you're going to play. You know, number one, Villanova's an excellent team. They've been an excellent program for 50 years. So, you know, they've been really good and they've been on this stage more often than us. But, you know, the biggest challenge starts with just their personnel just the professionalism that they that they live the, live with every single day. And so we've got to do a great job of making sure we're understanding their personnel well and just uh, that we have understanding. We've got to go out and be us, play our game. You know, it's five guys on the floor. Ball's going to jump up. The team that plays the best on any given day has the opportunity to win. If uh, media could share your name and affiliation, too, for Coach. Hi, Coach. Uh, Jay Skursky with the Buffalo News. Are you uh, able to play freely now as a, as a 16 seed going against the one? Is all the pressure off of you? Yeah. Well, you know, I don't, I don't really acknowledge pressure. You know, I think pre you know, pressure is what you put on yourself every single day. We've tried to do a great job of doing that, you know, in practice every single day. So, you know, I don't know if that, that really exists in our world. You know, we're going to go play freely because that's how we play. I have such a great belief in the guys we have inside our roster. We've challenged ourselves to the highest levels we could have this, this season, playing six NCAA tournament teams, playing on the road against some of the very best. And you know you just have to believe at some point that your preparation has you ready for the moment. How, how different does this feel being here now doing this as opposed to that first four? And is you know do you feel like this is a, a, a different level getting getting here? 
Uh, you know, no. I mean, I think it's you know it's a it's a tournament setting. I think the NCAA does a great job of making sure they're positioned and teams to feel as comfortable as possible. And with the short turnaround we had before, I think we're really well prepared for what we need to do. We had a short turnaround for University of New Orleans. We've got an even shorter turnaround for Villanova. So I think you know I think we feel pretty good on the stage we're sitting. Let's go here. Uh, Joe Giuliano from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Coach uh, um, Jim Phelan is a native Philadelphian. Yeah. Coach at Mount St. Mary's for 100 years. Um, what uh, what did you learn from him? Did you play for him, first of all? I did. I did. I played for Coach for three years. Uh, and w what did you learn from him, and how have you applied uh, his teachings to uh, your coaching style now? Yeah, well, I think the first thing I learned from him is you got to have really good players and really good guards. Cause I, I believe he was there for 49 years, but I forced him into retirement. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, you know, let's make sure you have good players. That allows you to be a really good coach. You know, one thing that Coach Phil was always great with is he always gave his guards a ton of freedom. You know, every day we came in and practiced, we did some very similar things. But it was all about being free and allowing the guys to play with a ton of confidence. And, you know, hopefully one day when people watch our teams play, they can see his resemblance on our teams because I think, you know, our teams really try to play that way. You know, we try to take outside shots when they're there. We try to play unselfish when the moment calls for it. And we try to play really stingy defenses. And I think when you see Coach Phelan, when you, if anyone remembers Coach Phelan's teams playing, you know, 830 victories, you know, his teams did those things very well. Right here in the center. You preach being locked in. How long did you let the guys enjoy last night's win? And when did sort of the focus become all about Villanova? Yeah, we've got a, just an amazing group of guys. I'm really excited for the country to get a chance to see these guys up out here on the stage and perform. Um, you know, they were they really enjoyed it in the locker room, and they were excited about the opportunity in the locker room. But about 10 minutes being in there, they started settling in and already started asking questions about Villanova, already started being eagerly, eager, eagerly asking questions about when they could watch film, when they can start preparing. So you know, they've, you know, they've set a goal for themselves, and you know, they're going to continue to stay focused and locked in to try to achieve that goal. So you know, our group's a little different. I mean, they enjoyed it for about 10 minutes, I would say, and then they really reset pretty quickly, and they're ready for the next challenge. Uh, Junior Robinson, you know, hits the big shot last night, and he's got that kind of neat note about him of being the shortest player in, in the NCAA's right now. Uh, you know, just what what should the country know about about him, and you know, what makes him special as a person, as a player, that kind of thing? Yeah, you know, I, I don't I don't really think that he's one he's the short one of the shortest guys. I think he's one of the best guards, and I think you know people are really going to chance to get to notice that our backcourt. Is, is exceptional with Elijah Long and Junior Robinson. So, you know, I think people are going to really start to get a chance to see two of these guys play together in a fashion that you don't get a chance to see very often. Elijah got in foul trouble last night, so he wasn't able to, to fully be out there the entire time. But I felt like these two guys in the backcourt can be as good as anyone. And on any given night, they, they can play with anyone. Um, Junior, in particular, just has a tremendous heart, has a tremendous passion for winning, tremendous passion for his teammates. And, you know, he has a spont his spontaneity allows him the chance to make big plays. And he's done that for us not just this year, but in the years past. So the country needs to know about him is that he's got an incredible heart, and he's got an incredible passion, and he's going to try to attack every moment out there. They're going to really enjoy watching him play. Right up front here, Coach Lovin. Uh, Ryan Fannin with Villanova Radio. Uh, Coach, if you could talk about your style of play offensively. Yeah and then your style of play defensively in terms of man-to-man -man zone, just to learn a little bit more about what you guys do at both ends. Yeah, well, we're going to play on the defensive end. We're going to play predominantly man-to-man. We have some zone stuff in there, but, you know, I just, I just feel like real men play man-to-man -man defense. <laughs> so, you know, we're going to play man-to-man, -man, and, uh, you know, if something happens miraculous and we have to go to the zone, then we will. But we're going to do our great job as we can just trying to stay man-to-man. -man. You know, we've done a great job of that. All season long against many opponents, even in non-conference against that tough schedule, our man-to-man -man defense was very good. Iowa State would blow one point per possession. They're one of the best offensive teams in the country. So I have a lot of, a lot of confidence in our team defensively. Offensively, we're going to try to spread you out. We play a couple different styles. You know, we'll play two post guys some with the opportunity to, uh, to ball screen you and throw the ball to a low post and attack from there. Um, but predominantly the game, we'll play with four guards out, very similar to Villanova, where we're going to space the floor out. We're going to shoot 24 to 25 threes a night. We shot those at 36% this past year. Which is, uh, which is a pretty high percentage. And so we're going to really try to space you out and make outside shots. That's going to open the floor up for Elijah Long and Junior Robinson to get to the front of the rim. And uh, you know if they're able to do that, we're able to make about 15 threes tomorrow night. It'll be a good day. And follow up to that, what would you probably say are the overall two or three biggest strengths of your ball club? Yep. And what areas have you struggled the most with on sort of maybe an area that really needed to get better as the year evolved? Yeah, uh, our versatility, I think, on our roster 
we have a lot of guys that can guard a lot of different positions and a lot of guys that can handle. And so, you know, a lot of times we're able to put defenses in tough, tough predicaments on offense because Chris Ray played point guard in high school. So essentially, you know, he's, a, he's like a, a third or fourth ball handler on the floor for us who can make plays and decisions for us. I think those are, that's one of our biggest strengths is our versatility. And again, a lot of guys that can shoot the ball from the outside and a lot of guys that can get the ball to, to the right guys. Uh, I think defensively, I think we had to work on most. It was really just, just learning how to play with physicality, just being able to rebound the basketball. You know, we're, we're still a very young team, so that, that, that kind of comes and goes with, with young teams. But we've done a great job of that as of late over the last month, being able to rebound the basketball and, and uh, find enough ways to make some tough plays. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Coach, uh, two questions. One, what is your biggest concern about Villanova? And number two, did you ever feel at the beginning of the season you'd have a shot at the defending national champ? Yeah, well, uh, biggest concern really is just the Villanova, just how well they play. I mean, they're as connected as a program, not just a team, as I've ever seen. You know, everything they do from practice to the game carries over. They just do a tremendous job of playing together and carrying over the things that they work on. And you know, that's, always a big, that's always a big struggle for a coach, is trying to get his teams to be able to do that. Coach Wright's done an unbelievable job of getting a group of guys in there that buy into what he's telling them to do and what he's preaching to do. And he's been able to do that great with those guys. What was your second question? Uh, yeah. Well, it's always a tremendous opportunity. You know, I think that's one of the biggest things. You know, when that ball goes up tomorrow, it won't matter if they're national champions or not. I mean, that's just the reality of it. The team that puts together the best game plan and their team that follows it the best is going to have the opportunity to win. Um, they've done that 30 plus times this year. So, you know, that's that's a challenge that it, that it is. But, you know, tomorrow's a new day. The ball's going to go up. We'll have the opportunity to play against one of the best. You know, but I think we would consider ourselves one of the best. There's, uh, what, 65 teams left, 64 teams left in this tournament. So there's 64 teams that still have a chance to win a national title. Um, so I would consider our team as good as any. Get uh, three questions here. We'll start in the center, and we'll come over here. Adam Pohl with Mount St. Mary's Radio. Coach Christian, uh, I know that uh, many of these Villanova players come from the D.C. Baltimore area, and that's uh, the predominant area in which you recruit from as well. And uh, you knew them on the recruiting trail before they were uh, Wildcats. What is it like uh, facing guys that you've seen grow not only within your own program but within theirs? Yeah, you know, Josh Hart and, and Chris Jenkins, I've had a chance to watch these guys play for a long, long time just being in the in the D.C. area. And, you know, Josh I know a little better than Chris. You know, Josh has had a chance to watch him really grow up from a person who's getting adjusted at Sidwell Friends School to the person that he is now as one of the best players in the country. And one of the things that's really exciting for me is going to, you know, I've always known him to be one of the best people I've ever I've ever had a chance to recruit and get to know. And so one of the best things for me, being a guy from a distance, is getting a chance to watch the country get to know him and how what an what a amazing person that he is. He's a guy who's really created his own destiny in this thing. He's not only worked on his game, but he's worked on himself personally. And he's really, really turned himself into an unbelievable person. And I'm looking forward to, to continue to root, on, root, root for him on after this. Um, but tomorrow, we're obviously going to be on different sides of the coin. <laughs> Front left. Paul Gotham with Pick and Splinters. You mentioned your non-conference schedule, pretty challenging. How does that prepare you for tomorrow night? Well, you know, we're going to play against a, a team that's complete on all ends. And when we played that non-conference schedule, we had to do that. You know, playing six, six teams during the NCAA tournament, I think eight teams that were in there, uh, at least in their championship games, and then a Texas Arlington team that lost in the semifinal that had the 37 RPI in the country. So, you know, I always feel like, you know, to, to be at your best, you have to challenge yourself against the best. You have to be able to look in the mirror and see where you're, you know, where you're weakest at against the very best. If you do that against anyone else, you're kind of shortchanging yourself. So I think it helps us to understand what we need to do. You know, the fact that we've been in a lot of these games, I think, is a big strength for us. Understanding the the level of physicality, understanding the level of uh, execution you got to have, understanding how how fast you got to get back in transition because those all change depending on the level that you're at. So I think that's a big strength of our team is just being just having the fact we've had to do it time and time again and we've got experience doing it. Uh, Joe Stojic with Heroes Media Group. Uh, what does this this mean for you? This tournament. What does it mean for you and the program? And how is the uh, program going to be able to succeed and capitalize on? on being a, a part of the field. Yeah, well, you know, we've got a tremendous basketball tradition uh, here at Mount St. Mary's. Maybe, maybe you know, uh, as mentioned before, Coach Jim Phelan coached here for 49 years. Um, he's in the College Basketball Hall of Fame, 830 wins. You know, so we're all continuing on a legacy that's pretty large. You know, I always consider our tradition way more like, like a Carolina or a Kentucky because it's an older tradition. 
you know, it's been around for a long time. You know, a lot of our home games are filled with people who came to Mount Games as children, and now their children come, and so on and so forth. So you don't see that at many places around the country. A lot of places have new traditions. We, you know, we have an old tradition that expects our basketball program to be good and loves to support our basketball program. So it starts there. I think you know, moving forward, anytime you have a chance to play on the biggest stages against the best teams, you get a chance to show how much progress your program is making. And tomorrow gives, provides us opportunity to show how much progress we've made since the last time we were here in 2008 when they played North Carolina. And so that's going to be exciting for us. And we'll be able to continue on, on to the great tradition we have, um, partly because we've got great players within our program now. We've continued to recruit well. And this can only help us continue to recruit well and bring in quality guys that can make our product better. Down here in the center. Having already been on the big stage last night, how do you think that helps you going into tomorrow night? Well, I always feel like settling down is important, you know, in any tournament setting. Um, and I think that's really important to, to be able to do is just being able to, you know, to understand, like, the bounce of the ball is a little bit different, the neutral site's a little bit different. You know, we should be pretty comfortable with that. Um, you know, the only issue is really is that Villanova has all those guys back basically from last year, and they really <laughs> played pretty well in the last tournament. So, you know, they're going to be pretty settled as well. So, you know, I look for two teams here. Usually you have a lot of turnovers early in the game. I think both teams will be pretty settled in pretty early on, and you know, I look for it to be a really competitive game throughout. Any other questions? All right, Coach, congratulations on getting here, and good luck tomorrow. Thanks so much. Six o'clock with Virginia Tech student athletes.
Okay, now joined by uh, Virginia Tech student athletes, uh, Seth Allen, Zach Leday. Gentlemen, welcome to Buffalo. Glad to have you here. We'll open up uh, for questions for them at this time. Please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. And if you please give your name and affiliation. Start right down front there. Uh, Mark Berman, the Roanoke Times. Uh, guys, uh, obviously Wisconsin's got a lot of size. How worried are you about having to deal with those guys in the paint, especially uh, you know when you got a, a team that's trying to avoid foul trouble? Uh, we're just gonna go out there and play as hard as possible. Every team is bigger than us, so it's not nothing new. So we're just gonna go play as hard as possible, try to box out, get the rebound. Seth? Oh, uh, I agree with Zach. Um, that's kind of been our Achilles heel all season, so uh, we're used to it. Uh, we just got to fight hard for rebounds and position and um, limit them to one shot. Other questions? Follow up here. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, guys, what have you been doing since you got to Buffalo? And, you know, with this being your one and only NCAA tournament experience of your career, how much are you trying to kind of soak everything in this week here in Buffalo? Um, we've just been – we practice uh, – they go and lift in the morning. Um, we eat. We watch a lot of film. We do homework. Um, we chill together. I mean, it's it's all snow outside, so we're not leaving the <laughs> hotel for walks or golfing or nothing. But um, yeah, we just we do a lot of things in the hotel and just a lot of like team stuff. Yeah, nope. we just chill. We don't really do nothing that much. No golf planned at all this trip. Nah, no nah. golfing in the snow. Nah. Okay. nah, maybe some maybe some snow some snow. Uh, some snow, snow people. angels, yeah, yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah, we went to the Buffalo Bills facility. Oh, oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, that was cool. That was cool. Yeah, forgot about that. Back here, hi guys, Joe Beamer, WBEN. Um, two of your last three games, you blew second half leads. Uh, what do you take away from that, and what are you going to change for the Wisconsin game? Can you say that again, please? Uh, I'm sorry, two of your last three games, uh, you guys blew second half leads, Wake Forest and Florida State. What do you take away from that going into the Wisconsin game? Um, I think that we just got to just play our game, take it possession by a time. Uh, we can't get ahead of ourselves if we're up or down. We just got to just play by media timeouts and try to win media timeouts. Um, I think that when we look like it's like for a whole game, like we look ahead of a whole game, it, it, it's hard for us. So when we just break it down into little bits, it's uh, easier for us. Right here in front left here. Hi, Tom Oates, Wisconsin State Journal. Uh, this is for both you guys. Uh, what's it like as a former starter coming off the bench, and what do you think it brings to you? What do you think it has brought to your team having you two come off the bench uh, with all the scoring you do? Zach, you want to start? Uh, I say that it helps our team because anybody can take any role, and no one's entitled to start or anything like that. So just by playing that and seeing how hard you got to work, it doesn't matter who starts, it's whoever plays the hardest. And I feel like we give a big amount of energy coming off the bench and it gets other people's confidence up. I'm, I guess people like starting, it doesn't really matter to us. We just want to come and play as long as possible and be in the game, affecting the game, so. Um, I think that uh, Coach Buzz always tells us to embrace like whatever's in front of us, whether it be a game, uh, a role. Um, anything. So um, I think me and Zach done a great job of just embracing our role of coming off the bench. Um, it's hard sometimes, you know, guys are already getting past their first win and we come in on our first win trying to keep up with them. They're already loose. So, I mean, it, it's been tough sometimes, but you just got to fight through it and just keep going. Um, try to be, we just try to play hard off the bench and just bring energy and excitement to the game. Um, our teammates, uh, they know all of us could start like in, any of us. We, we play seven, eight guys. So, uh, I mean, anybody, you could start. We play a lot of guards, so you could really just put anybody in there. So it doesn't really matter who starts. It's, it's about who finishes and who's on top at the end of the game, um, each team. Let's go right here. Ava Wallace with the Washington Post. Um, Seth, you said win the media timeouts. That sounds like a buzz thing. What do you mean by that? Um, well, each, um, each game has 10 media timeouts. Uh, so um, we just, each four minutes, we just try to win the four minutes. Uh, we call them like uh, ATOs, like after timeouts. So um, when we come out of the timeouts, we try to win those possessions. That are, uh, there's a one possession for them and there's one possession for us and that's what counts towards the ATO. 
So when we talk about winning media timeouts, um, so if it's 16 minutes and me and Zach are coming in off the bench, when it hits 12 minutes, we want to do better, get more stops before it gets 12 minutes than the other team. So instead of just being like, before halftime, let's win. Well, let, like we try to break it into media timeouts. Like, well, let's win this media timeout. Let's see how good we could do this media timeout. So it's, it's the time in between, not necessarily you guys being on the sideline talking. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And then um, we talked to you so much about what it meant to just get to the tournament, and you said how hungry you guys were for more. So kind of a silly question, but other than obviously advancing, what, does a, what would a, a win mean uh, just in terms of direction of the program and, and for you guys as validation as well? Uh, I think it would be huge just for everybody just to keep this run going. It's been a special story. We don't play that many guys. We're small, all the stuff that's been rolling about us. And uh, it's really special, and we just want to keep it going. We just want to play together as long as possible and play as hard as possible for each other and just be there for one another. So it would be really special to get wins in this tournament and just keep on going. But we got to start off with this one. Mark, right down front. Uh, as you guys watch film of Wisconsin, what, what stands out to you about Ethan Happ and, and Nigel Hayes? And, you know, is this one of the better post games, two of the better inside players you, you're going to be facing this year? Um, I say they have very unique games. Uh, Happ likes to back you down and get you into the basket, and he's really good at pivoting and going different ways. He's a good defender as well. He gets a lot of steals. He leads the team in a lot of categories. And Hayes is very versatile. He likes to do a lot, bring the ball up. He can rebound. He can shoot the mid-range to three-pointers. He can get on the glass. But I'll say what's big for us is just keeping them off the glass, contesting their shots, uh, not falling for the moves, and just keeping them off the glass. And I think that we'll be fine if we do that. Is there a follow-up, Mark? Uh, when you watch the Wisconsin film, did, did they remind you of anybody who played this year? Is, is it like going to be like playing Virginia maybe or, or anybody that you've, you've dealt with this year before? Um, they're similar to Virginia. Uh, they're like a Big Ten version of Virginia kind of. Um, being that they, uh, they play slower than most teams, they kind of want to control and play at their own pace. Um, part of that is how they play, part of like the style of play they have, and they have like two really good postmen. So throwing it in and playing out the post takes patience and they want to guard you for long so you can't take quick shots uh, against them. So they're a really tough team and kind of similar to Virginia except they play a little bit more one-on-one -on -one ball than Virginia does. They, uh, they throw it in and just space and let him go to work while Virginia's coming off of down screens and trying to just lull you to sleep a lot. Any other questions for either Zach or Seth? I got one more. You know, is this a, because of their size and all that, is this a tough matchup? Or do you look at it and say, oh, I, I think we can shoot threes against these guys. It's not going to be too bad. You know, what, what kind of, uh, uh, you know, what, what's your assessment of how tough a game this might be for you or not? I think we just got to go into it playing our game. I mean, part of it, you want to know what the other team does. You want to know how they play. But um, you can't bend towards their, their style. You got to just enforce how we play. and. We play fast, we play hard, we play together, we play with each other, we play smart. Um, so I think that's really what's most important going into tomorrow night. Uh, are we going to play like Virginia Tech or, or is Wisconsin going to control the pace and we're going to play it their style? Okay, final question. Uh, everyone was obviously very excited on, on Sunday uh, when you guys got in. Uh, what, what's been the mood of the team like uh, since, since we last saw you on Sunday? What's kind of the, uh, what, what's it been like at the, at the hotel these last few days? <laughs> Everybody's uh, looking at you, Zach. You know, we've just been going, you know, just going crazy, running up and down the hall. No, I'm playing. <laughs> but uh, uh, everybody was really happy when we got in. They wanted to see where we were going. We saw we were going to Buffalo, and it was snowing and stuff. So. That was cool, just getting out. I'm from Texas, so I don't really see no snow like that. But um, after we found out where we got in, I mean, everybody was just all business then. I mean, everybody's been watching film. Even the young boys been watching film, uh, just watching how Wisconsin plays. I think I've watched like six or seven of their games. I watched like the Michigan game like three times in like the past two days. So I mean, everybody's just watching film and just 
getting ready for the matchup and just trying to get used to tendencies and stuff like that and trying to get an advantage. That's important. Trying to get an advantage on your opponent in a short amount of time in a tournament like this. So that's what everybody's been doing. That's what I think. So. Yeah. Zach, Seth, thanks a lot for your time. Appreciate Good luck it. to you tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Can we have these? Uh, yeah, we're going to take them down. All right, bet. <laughs>
Joined now by uh, Virginia Tech head coach, Buzz Williams. Coach, welcome to Buffalo. Great to have your team here. Thank we'll you. go ahead and uh, open up with uh, questions. If you please raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. Please give your name and affiliation uh, before you ask your first question. Let's start right down here with Mark to your right there. Mark uh, Berman, the Roanoke Times. Hello, Buzz. Um, now that you've had some days to look at Wisconsin, how do you go about defending you know, big guys like Happ and, and Hayes, and, and especially for a team that wants to avoid uh, getting in foul trouble? Yeah, it'll, it'll be a constant stress for us. I don't know that we have a simple answer, and I don't know if one answer um, is suffice. I think we'll have to do multiple things. Uh, both of those guys are better than our guys. Um, both of them can get you in foul trouble. Uh, both of them are very good one-on-one -on -one scorers. Uh, they have three really good one-on-one -on -one scorers, but within 15, 16 feet, both of those two guys are really good. Go right uh, here in the center. Norm Wood from the Daily Press in Newport News, Virginia. Buzz, you mentioned Sunday night that your job is kind of to get these guys not to be satisfied with the participation trophy and want to hang around a little while. Have you been satisfied with the level of focus that they've had between you know, having a little bit of fun and, and enjoying the experience and, and dealing with the task at hand, or will you really have that answer until 9.40 tomorrow night? Well, I, I think the only way to judge it, Norm, is um, daily. And I think their concentration level has been uh, superb. Uh, I don't want to be a taskmaster master as a coach relative to not being satisfied, while at the same time this is a memory of a lifetime for them. So I, I don't – I hope that what I said didn't come across in a negative way, uh, but I also think that uh, it is part of my job, part of my role, uh, to push them to be their absolute best. And that doesn't mean that we're going to win every game, but uh, since Sunday night, uh, we had to abort our original travel plan because of the weather. I thought they handled that well. We've become the most diverse uh, program ever relative to altered travel plans. So they, they kind of thought it was normal. Um, but our two practices here and our three film sessions thus far have been outstanding. And I think that um, things change when you're uh, playing games after spring break because guys understand the magnitude of what it is. Even if they haven't done it as best they can, they understand that something about this is different. And I think our guys have been really good. Right in front here. Tom Oates, Wisconsin State Journal. How you doing? Good How to see doing, you. Buzz? Nice yes, to sir. See you. Um, I was just curious as to wh why you brought uh, Zach and S Seth off the bench. What went into that decision? And more importantly, what has it given you? Because it must be giving you something because you've stuck with it. Well, uh, it, it started uh, in the right way. Um, we scrimmaged South Carolina on the last Saturday of October. And in the first 10 minutes, as you would expect playing a team uh, coached by Frank, uh, Seth got hurt. So uh, we then, uh, that was on a Saturday. Uh, the Thursday before our second scrimmage, which was at George Mason, uh, Zach got an offensive rebound, which is rare, and got hit in the head. And uh, Obviously, they're making movies about concussions now. And so he was out for the next 14 days. Our first game was the second Friday in November. Uh, Seth was healthy by then. Zach wasn't healthy by then. But both had miss, missed a lot of practice. And so it just started as it would for anybody else. And I think what's happened is uh, Hadim, our freshman center who starts, was forced into that role, and I think he's handled it fairly well. And it's probably kept Zach out of more foul trouble than we would have anticipated. Uh, for Seth, because he's a ball guard, he can play any position. And so it, um, we've only suited up eight guys all year long, uh, but the last eight games we've suited up seven. So there wasn't ever a lot of maneuverability, but over the last eight games there's been zero maneuverability. And as it transpired, Tom, what I mentioned to our team was, I think it was best for our team, and it was right in how it started. But as it evolved and morphed into something else, I thought it was a great example of what I want our program to be, and that's to be selfless. So it's two redshirt seniors. 
the two oldest kids on the team. You can argue the two most productive players on the team, the only guys that would be considered in some sort of stretch to get an all-conference vote of some sort, and they're both coming off the bench. Uh, and in an unspoken way, and you're the only one that's ever had enough sense to ask, um, I kind of like that I get to answer it on this stage because I think it speaks to the fabric of what we want to be about. I'm going to go in the back to Mark, and then we'll come up here. Uh, hi, Mark Tracy from the New York Times. On a lighter note, we had uh, Coach Huggins in here earlier, and uh, he was talking about how the origin of his game day dress is he was sweating a lot through a suit at halftime and decided, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I'm going to do. Uh, your, your battles with this uh, have been well documented, and I was wondering if you've ever considered uh, going that route. Yeah, uh, Coach is uh, first ballot Hall of Famer. He'll be the next guy that's uh, in the Hall of Fame that's still employed as a coach. Uh, there's only three of those left in our, in our world in college basketball, and he's one of them. Uh, coach can wear whatever he wants to wear. Where I'm from, the way I was brought up, um, you should always tuck your shirt in and you should always tie your shoes. And if for some reason you ever get a job that requires a college degree, it's the most respectful thing to start out in a tie. And uh, so uh, it's partly, mostly just because of how I was raised. And uh, if I had as much equity, and I never will, as Coach Hugs, uh, I might get that company that sponsors him with the pullover. I might, I might do the same thing. <laughs> Down uh, right here in the front left. Hi, Jim Polsley from Wisconsin State Journal. Buzz, you're dealing with a bunch of guys on your team that haven't been in an NCAA tournament, don't know what it's like. Wisconsin has two guys in Koenig and Hayes that have played in 14 NCAA tournament games, been part of 11 wins. Um, is that a legitimate concern, or do you think experience like that is, is overblown? Uh, no, I don't think it's overblown at all. Um, Four of their five starters in some capacity or another, like you mentioned, have played in a Final Four, have played in a national championship game, and have played in a Sweet 16. Um, we have a roster full of guys who tomorrow night, that will be their first time ever playing on a court that has an NCAA blue sticker on it. Um, we, we can't compare uh, to the job that Coach Ryan and Coach Guard have done, nor the experience uh, that their roster has. I, I think uh, when you look at how Wisconsin has played, what were they, seven and five when Greg took over? And then it went, uh, that was December the 15th after Corpus Christi. They were seven and five, and then they ran it to nine and nine. And then uh, they end up in the Sweet 16, and Coach Alvarez has to hire him. Uh, and they go to the Sweet 16. And then they uh, beat Syracuse, they beat Oklahoma, um, two Final Four teams from last year in non-conference play. They beat Georgetown. Um, they beat Carolina, didn't they? Played, played Carolina but lost, right? And then started 10-1 and one in non-conference play. I mean, uh, I, 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 obviously I've loved Coach Ryan forever, and I've known Coach Guard since uh, 15 years ago. But I, I think the, the consistency of the program and what they've meant um, the Hokies, we're not even in that same sphere. Do you have a question from the side? Yep, microphone up. Nope, one more. And then we'll go here. Um, Buzz, we know you love your football coaches. You have to introduce yourself, oh, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Ava Wallace with the Washington Post. I'm just kidding. Good coach. We know you love your football I, I, coaches. When I get fired, I'm going to do that. <laughs> you have to wear a suit for that anyways. Um. <laughs> yeah, I can wear a pullover right. from a man from the Times. Um, was it uh, enjoyable or special for you to meet with um, Sean McDermott? We saw that you guys got to go to the Bills facility, and, and what did he tell you guys? Anything that particularly captured your attention, I guess? Yeah, uh, I have way more football coaching friends than I do basketball coaching friends. Um, and for whatever reason, because of kind of how those relationships started, I've been able to develop really sound relationships with multiple NFL guys. I love Coach McDermott's story, right? He's 42. And he started in the lowest position you can in Philly for Andy Reid, who's a first ballot Hall of Famer. And um, I, I thought it would be cool for our guys to see an NFL facility. But the way that it all started, uh, because I don't have a personal relationship with Coach McDermott, is um, as a former manager, I've always taken great pride in the managers that we have had within our programs. and. Um, 
a former manager from Marquette is um, the assistant to the head coach. It was the first person that Coach McDermott hired. And so um, we now have two guys in the NBA that are former managers, uh, one guy in Major League Baseball and one guy in the NFL. And all of them were awful as managers, but I'm proud of what they've become as adults. And uh, so that's how it all started, but it was really cool. I did not expect Coach McDermott to spend time with our team, uh, but he said, what you think he would have said uh, with more power uh, and gusto because he's an NFL, he's one of 32 guys in the world that does what he does. Let's go here and then we've got to get a microphone up front here. Uh, Buzz, having played Wisconsin when you were at Marquette all, all those years, uh, in preparing for this game, did, did that help, I guess? Are they pretty much running the same kind of stuff as they did under Bo, or was, that, was it helpful? These helpful two guys memory? could probably answer that better. Um, I do think that it's helped. Um, it was like uh, the Cowboys and Redskins on Thanksgiving Day every time Marquette played Wisconsin. Um, there are similarities in what they do uh, and how they do it. I would say that their practice itineraries are somewhat similar. There are, are also unique differences. Uh, part of it is because of their personnel. Uh, part of it is, is probably what Greg is infusing into the program. Uh, that is his own beliefs, not that that would be negative to Coach Ryan, but uh, there's, there's for sure similarities. Uh, going back and looking at all of my notes and practice plans and all of that stuff in the six times we've played them, I didn't do that at the start because I didn't want that infiltrating my brain as I was studying them for this year. Uh, but I looked at it all yesterday, and there are um, – I showed our players uh, our practice plans. And uh, see, I've already told you this, and look, I was saying that in 2012 too. You know, so there are for sure similarities. We go here on the left and then back here in the center. Buzz, I don't need to tell you that you surprised a lot of people uh, when you left Marquette to take on this, this you know, challenging rebuild. Mm. Here we are, year three, you're in the NCAA tournament. Um, is that timeline? about what you expected? Are you ahead of schedule? What? Yeah, I don't know. I've never been smart enough to answer that question. Uh, obviously, it's been asked a lot. The first thing that I would say is uh, Marquette completely changed my children's lives. And forever, I will be grateful. Uh, they hired me. I don't know many uh, ADs and presidents that will hire a head coach with a losing record, uh, particularly a losing record after only one season particularly when they hire him and it's eight months removed from him resigning from that one year losing record. So uh, I know it's been uh, maybe said and described in different ways. Uh, I've, in the right way, uh, I wanna process it all because um, I don't think that it's all me, but all of the things that were written in both of your papers uh, in the journal Sentinel, uh, I have zero negative to say about anybody or any day that I was employed at Marquette. Incredibly grateful. Uh, the next thing that I would say specific to the timeline, uh, the timeline as of today is 1,090 days if you were counting at home. And um, there's no way that you can uh, be an agent of change as a single person in an organization and think that it will ever change. Um, Dr. Sands had been there three months before I was hired. Whip Babcock, our AD, had been there two months before I was hired. Uh, selfishly, I liked that I was the first major sports hire uh, because they want that to work. But I think that um, in order to get to this point in this league that we've competed in, we finished in last place in year one. That was the fourth consecutive year that they had finished in last place and multiple media outlets had said I'd committed career suicide. The thing was is I had a, a history of people saying that because that's what had happened when I resigned at New Orleans. And it's always uh, not gratifying. It's always another lesson for me that maybe what's written is not completely always the truth. But what can be quantified uh, other than words are the hearts of people that care. And what's happened at Virginia Tech is just a lot of people care. That's it. And uh, the 13 NCAA tournament games we played at Marquette before I was 40 years old, that happened not because of me, not because of Jimmy Butler, Jay Crowder. It's not that. 
There's a lot of people that cared. That's it. And uh, I've never looked at the job as, well, by this day we'll be successful, or by this day we'll be successful. This time last year we were playing in the NIT, and uh, I can't tell you how humbled I was by that. It was only the third time in the history of the ACC that there had been an eight-game improvement. In the history of, in my opinion, one of the best leagues ever, that there had been an eight-game improvement. But it was the first time uh, that that had happened from the last place team. And we did it in our second year. Uh, this year's team will only suit up seven, and we've made multiple decisions to redshirt guys because I believe it was right for their life not because we were making a push to go to the NCAA tournament. Um, and so to be in this position, I've never looked at it um, on a day basis. I've looked at it on today, did we do what was right to be sustainable for their lives in the long term? That's it. And it's not me. It's not Seth Allen. He's average at best. He has not received an all-conference vote. Uh, Zach Lede is below average at best. He has received one all-conference vote in two years. So there's 14 other head coaches, so that's 28 opportunities for a vote, and he's got one out of 28. So you, how, then, then how did it work? Well, it's just a lot of people doing a lot of work for the right reasons, and the intent of their heart is right. We've got time uh, for one there, and then we'll wrap up. Hey, Buzz. Joe Beamer, WBEN here in Buffalo. Um, it's documented that you and Frank Beamer have a great relationship. Have you talked to him since Sunday, and has he given you any advice going into this game? Uh, I love coaches in general, uh, particularly old coaches. Um, old people seem to think that I'm kind of like one of those wind-up uh, toys. You know, you just wind him up, and there he goes. Um, coach has been great to me from the very beginning. I met Coach uh, before my press conference at Virginia Tech, and uh, since he's retired, I would say our relationship has uh, increased by 100%. And that's because he has nothing to do other than watch Ellen every day. <laughs> and um, so I, I, I think that he just, he's more aware of what's going on. And I've been overly kind to him on purpose because I want somebody to do that to me uh, if I ever am able to get to that point. Uh, what most people that are retired say is make sure that you spend more time with your family and love them the way they're deserving of it. Uh, and the next thing is, is enjoy the moment because it's so hard to get. Just one more. Yep. Um, do you have a second half outfit in case you do sweat through your suit tomorrow? Yeah, I, I always do. Uh, I did it a lot in year one and year two. Um, what I tried to do is incorporate vests so that the sweating, I mean this in the right way, uh, it's the silliest thing ever, right? Uh, when you get your car fixed, does the mechanic sweat? <laughs> you know, the guy that builds your house, the carpenter, I think he sweats. And uh, I, I know it's funny, and I know I'm not the best looking guy in the world, but and I'm just working real hard, that's it, you know? And uh, I know it's, it's turned into such a, it's beyond silly to me to be, to be honest, semi-offensive, right? All I want to do is help our guys as much as we can. And if that means I sweat, like, who cares? That's kind of the way I feel. So I just wear a, a vest so it doesn't become uh, viral on Twitter. <laughs> Buzz, you uh, – uh, Last one. What? Buzz, you mentioned uh, Sunday that uh, uh, playing Wisconsin is kind of like playing Virginia – how has that maybe been beneficial to you guys this week in preparation? Well, uh, they would be the only team, Berman, that we've played that's similar in philosophy uh, relative to pace of play, relative to their defensive thoughts. Um, this Wisconsin team throws it inside much more than this Virginia team, but that's personnel specific. Uh, last year, Virginia's team threw it inside much more. Um, this will be West, Wisconsin's played 34 games. And uh, three of their 34 games, they've had 70 possessions. Three. Uh, this will be our 30. We've played 32 games. And uh, we've had 15. 
games that have had 70 or more possessions. The three games for Wisconsin that have had 70 possessions in it were all in overtime. And so just that in and of itself uh, is very UVA-like. You know, when we played Virginia the second time, uh, they were pace of play relative-wise. I, I don't say any of this to be negative. Um, they were the second slowest team in the country. Well, we're, we're not fast, but we're for sure not comfortable. Let's play real slow and walk it up. And so I think that'll be a lot of the game, you know. And at UVA, they just destroyed us on the offensive glass. And when you're playing a team that's as slow as they are, when they get a second opportunity, well, you're just going to guard them for 30 more seconds. And uh, their offense helps their defense, right? A team that plays as slow as they do, their defense is always going to be good. Because on offense, they hold the ball, sort of, if that's the right way of saying it. And so um, I've just told our guys, it's uh, UVA. They just happen to wear red. And they have uh, really good players um, that have experience this time of the year in winning. Bill Dyer is here from the Athletic Communications Office at Virginia Tech. He can assist you uh, with Virginia Tech uh, student Why don't we bring Dyer coaches? up and let them ask questions <laughs> to Dyer? Thanks, Coach. You sweat too, Dyer.